my name is Dr. Kane. I'm an orthopedic physical therapist, a manual therapy specialist, and an adjunct professor teaching biomechanics and kinesiology. I use biomechanics in my everyday practice and believe that it compiles the fundamental knowledge of the movement sciences. So grab your pens and pencils and settle in today's classroom. I've summarized the information from a variety of articles and books, but the main sources were the text by Lavangi and Norkin, Joint Structure and Function, and Newman's Kinesiology of the Musculoskeletal System. The main purpose of today's presentation is to review sternoclavicular joint arthrokinematics with upper extremity elevation, meaning how does the clavicle move on top of the manubrium. So, which one of the following do you think connects the shoulder girdle to the axial skeleton? Yes, it is the sternoclavicular joint, which is going to be the star of our presentation today. But before we move on, do you guys remember what kind of joint is sternoclavicular joint? Here's a hint for you. Yes, it is a saddle joint. Here's an image of an ideal sternoclavicular joint. Take a closer look at the proximal clavicle. It is both concave and convex, and suitably the manubrium is also both convex and concave. From an inferior to superior, the clavicle is convex, and from inferior to superior, the manubrium is concave. From medial to lateral, the clavicle is concave, and from medial to lateral, the manubrium is convex. So let's review the concave and convex rule. The shape on the left is a concavity and the shape on the right is a convexity. When a convex surface moves on top of the concave surface, the roll and the glide occur in the opposite directions, which means if we have a superior roll, it will be accompanied by an inferior glide. And if there is an inferior roll, it will be accompanied by a superior glide. When a concave surface moves on top of the convex surface, then the roll and the glide will occur in the same direction, which means that a superior roll will be accompanied by a superior glide, and if there is an inferior roll, it will be accompanied by an inferior glide. So let's get to the orthokinematics of the sternoclavicular joint. Prior to understanding the movement that occurs at the joint, we first need to identify the cardinal planes that the joint is situated in. There are three planes that dictate the sternoclavicular joint arthrokinematics. The frontal plane, in which the clavicle elevates and depresses. The sagittal plane, where the clavicle moves in an anterior and posterior directions. And the transverse plane, where the clavicle spins around its longitudinal axis. The trick to understanding the sternoclavicular joint is to understand that each of the two joint surfaces, convexity and concavity, corresponds to the cardinal plane that it's located in. For instance, proximal clavicular convexity is associated with the frontal plane motion, while proximal clavicular concavity is associated with sagittal plane motion. So let's take a look at the frontal plane where the clavicle moves in the superior and inferior directions. In this plane, the clavicle is convex at its proximal end and the manubrium is concave. So the convex clavicle will move on the concave manubrium. In order to perform an upper extremity elevation, the clavicle must roll in a superior direction and glide in an inferior direction on top of the manubrium. Frontal plane biomechanics, superior roll, inferior glide of the clavicle on top of the manubrium. In the sagittal plane, clavicle moves in an anterior and posterior directions. Now, in the sagittal plane, the joint surface of the proximal clavicle is concave and the manubrium is convex. That means that the roll and the glide will occur in the same direction. So for the upper extremity elevation, proximal clavicle will roll posteriorly and glide posteriorly. Sagittal plane biomechanics, posterior roll, posterior glide of the clavicle on the manubrium. And finally, let's take a look at the arthrokinematics in the transverse plane. This is probably the simplest mechanics to understand because there is no roll or glide. The clavicle simply spins around its longitudinal axis. So with upper extremity elevation, the clavicle spins in the posterior direction along its longitudinal axis. I hope this video was useful 
and you gained a clear understanding of the biomechanics at the sternoclavicular joint? If yes, then give it a thumbs up. Once again, the key element here is understanding that the sternoclavicular joint is a saddle joint moving in three cardinal planes. I hope you have a wonderful day, my fellow moment science enthusiasts. Bye!